Hello everyone and welcome to Masterclass, a unique monthly conversation between young filmmakers from around the world and an established storyteller, brought to you by the Ghetto Film School and Google+. Today joining us for Masterclass is Tamara Davis. Thank you for joining us, Tamara. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. So are we. <laughs> so I went to film school in Los Angeles at LA City Film School and I was just coming out of film school and I had an idea to make a movie and I made in part of the package of my coming you know to producers to show them my you know the script I had actually shot a music video for one of the bands that I wanted on the soundtrack well um, I got a call from the record company that that who um, that band was on and I had and the president of the record company called me in this is in the early 80s and I thought I was in trouble because I didn't have permission to do this video or whatever I shot and he looked at me from his table in this big president room <laughs> and said what did you shoot this video on and I, I had shot it at film school so I'd shot it on Super 8 and he said we've never seen anything like this this is beautiful you know, it was amazing we'll give you fifty thousand dollars and here's another band and make it look like that again so um, music actually got me into my first career because um, yeah from there I just started making music videos you know there's different ways you can put music into film like one way is that music video where you know it's for sure going to be that song and then it's up to me to make a, a visual that goes with that particular music so it's set up that way then there's I make a, a video you know or I make a short film or I make a movie and I put something in it that's already been created so that's kind of like what you guys are doing the the movies already made or you're gonna make the movie and you have the, the music that's gonna go with the best with your film so there's that way um, but then that means you have to get the rights to those songs and you know that becomes kind of complicated then there's the way that you make your movie and you have somebody compose an original piece for your film that is scored to it that hits all the emotion and you have a composer that you work with so those were the ways that you know film makes it you know that music makes its way into film that you know, I'm familiar with. And what are some of the things that you would recommend in case um, that we can't get the, the rights to a specific song that we want? Yes. Um, what are some other things that us well, as young That happens could... to me all the time. I'm working on a TV show now and, you know, a lot of times I'll put a song in and, you know, we'll look and see how much that song may cost. It The cheapest we, I mean, usually it costs like Gosh, it could cost anywhere from $1,000 to $25,000, you know, and of course even more. But um, usually our budget is more like we get five songs for maybe about $5,000 in there. So, um, so you try to negotiate. A lot of times you can't. And then what happens all the time is, is you either find a song that's less, that kind of has that same tempo, or you work with a composer. And having that song there is really great because that song shows them what you like and what works for your piece and then they can make a song that sounds like that it doesn't have to be a direct ripoff but the idea is, is that that's what you chose and so that's what supports your vision the best so a lot of times well you know most of the time I'll have somebody then compose something that sounds like what I put in if, if I don't put anything in the composer it's very difficult to discuss music so the composer doesn't have anything for me to base our discussion on but if I put some music there, it opens up a place for us to discuss what works, what doesn't, you know, why I liked this piece for it. Before joining the class, all of our students completed a creative assignment. Um, and for it, they had to write up a short story concept. Um, and after they turned that short story concept in, we gave them a list of 15 songs created by Tamara. So she selected 15 songs that she thought um, could be interesting and could make our students think of new layers of their stories. So then our students had to pair up their story with one of those 15 songs and discover new things about it and make both of them work. My concept is basically derived of two principles. The first was that we as a society have evolved so much in terms of our thought processes that we've become ignorant to the most obvious cries for help. The second part of it was that our lives are really what we make of them. 
and how two people could be presented with exactly the same opportunity, but it's how they choose to take those opportunities that will determine their life. So for the majority of the film, I wanted two people running, just running for the whole film, and as they're running, they're losing parts of themselves, and onto these parts of themselves, um, they've got you know, cries for help written on them, and they're going to be dropping these as they're running, and nobody will realise. People will be picking them up, throwing them away, but not realising that there's a cry for help. Eventually, the, the two protagonists will come to a crossroads where one will decide to go right and the other will decide to go left. And we'll see how one person will eventually end up on top and the other person will just fade into the black. And um, that's pretty much it. I chose um, A Wall Nation Sale as oh, my song. Cool, awesome. So then let's listen to a quick clip from Sale. Awesome. I can Great. already see like them running through to that song, which is pretty cool. Tamara, what are your thoughts? I think that's great. I mean, when you were describing it, I was thinking about that song because that song has such drive to it. So I don't know if you thought of your idea before you heard that song, but you know, I felt like you know them running through the streets, that would be a perfect song for that. Thank you. That's really yeah. cool. So, um, Tamara, what are some of the challenges that you think um, Sarah could be facing um, in production, and what are some tips that you, you could think uh, to give her? so she can make the best of it. I think for that song, because the song is so strong, I would think your biggest challenge would be to make sure that you don't make just a music video, so that you actually are making something that will still tell a story and um, not let the music take over too much from what you want to do. So because that song is so powerful, um, I would just say you really have to make sure you have a powerful narrative to support it. So that, I think, would be the biggest challenge. Absolutely. So, uh, Sarah, what kind of genre are you thinking of um, of making this piece? I think I'm going to create my own genre and try and make it as thought provoking and try to really evoke some passion. Um, so, yeah, I want a bit of everything and a bit of suspense, a bit of action from all the running. So, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> what part of like what's interesting when you pitch your ideas? Like, if you were trying to put you know, pitching those ideas, a lot of times it's really good to back them up, like I was saying before, with references to other films or images and things like that. And that'll really help producers give you money because they can see, like, oh, this is the vision, this is the colors he wants to use. It's supposed to look like this picture in a magazine or this picture in a book or something like that. So that's always really helpful because it's so abstract, it could be anything. So it's really helpful. like. When, when you were talking about your story, um, I was thinking, you know, in film school we used to watch a lot of, you know, the surrealist filmmakers, you know, some Salvador Dali or some Maya Darren. I don't know if you've seen any of Maya Darren's work, but like in the early days they did a lot of films like that. So I think it'd be interesting for you to watch some Maya Darren films. But then I also think contemporary, you could think of like Inception, you know, and seeing how things fall, you know, obviously that's a huge budget, but you know, those are the kinds of ways that you will help to communicate your ideas. Like, oh, I want it to look kind of really, like, um, early, you know, whatever, like this or like this. That those are those will be very helpful. So now let's go down under New Zealand. Jin, what do you have for us? <laughs> um, so my story is about two girls, and they ride bikes around town and stuff, being badass. And so they always go to their local shop. And um, all they do really is just hang out there and eat ice cream. So it's kind of like their territory. Um, but ne the next day, there are two other girls that are already kind of invaded their space. And they're eating ice cream as well there. So the girls who are there originally um, challenged them to a bike race. And so whoever wins gets the place. And, um, yeah, so during the race, each member of the team kind of like hurts themselves and like falls off the bike and there's only two left and they come to a decision they both come equally tied and winning and so they come to a truce and agreement that 
they can all go to the place and hang out together. So it's kind of like a happy ending after all, yeah. And the song I chose was um, Bad Girls by MIA. Nice. And I think I could really play with like the lyrics and um, color and costuming as well. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Then let's listen to a little clip uh, from Girls for MIA. That's so cool. I could really see the, the relationship between the song and your story. I can already, I was telling you guys yesterday that I could already see them like riding by in slow motion in their bikes and looking all badass. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> what are your initial thoughts, Tamara? Um, well, what I loved about her story is um, I had a couple big questions. Your story is so, it has a really good idea. Um, I'm wondering how old the girls are. Yeah, I want to know what they look like. I want to know mm. what the ages are, what their bikes are, what they're wearing. I think that your story has a very specific style to it. So, I mean, you can do that story with nine-year-old girls or you can do that story with like 20-year-old girls. And that's going to yeah. really, you know, determine how I visualize what you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, initially, my first idea was doing with young girls, but um, I know how hard it is to direct young actors. So, I mean, with this story and with that song choice as well, I think I can do it with um, like twenty-year-olds or eighteen-year-olds. You know, like kind of like older girls, but they act quite young. <laughs> yeah. So I think I will go with like the eighteen-year-old, twenty-year-old girl look kind of thing. And I think I can do more with like costuming and makeup as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would be really cool. Cause then it, you know, I think with that song um, and that age, and then with the bikes and what they wear and the attitude that they throw to each other, mm. I think you have a really good chance of succeeding and doing something really yeah. cool. It's so important to just make short films. I mean, you know, as much experience that you can have making films is so, so important. You know, you don't know how somebody's going to do until you put them on the set. You know, I'll hire a director on a TV show I'm doing, and they could act really great in a meeting, but when you stand on a set in front of 60, 70 people and tell them what to do, your real skills come forward, you know? Can you communicate to the cast after a rehearse, you know, during a rehearsal what you want them to do? Can you communicate to your DP and your crew how you want it to be shot? So the, as much as you can feel comfortable in presenting your ideas and communicating those is hugely, hugely important. And that really comes from, you know, I have to say, putting those hours in and doing that. So even if you're directing, you know, yourself, if that's all you have, I, I did a cooking show and I was able to do it because I just, I, w I wanted to be a filmmaker and the only people I had and that, and that were free was me and my family. <laughs> so, you know, having all those hours of, knowing where to put a camera, how to edit, how to work with kids, how to, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. It's, it's really about clocking those hours. If you want to find out more information about Masterclass or you want to be one of the students joining us in a class, go to ghettofilm.org. Thank you and see you next class. Bye-bye. <laughs>